the northern campaign. He left nothing undone of all that Yahweh commanded Moses. Reading Joshua 11 Objective to show how Joshua in faith continued to subdue all organised opposition in the land of Cana, this time in the north. Background The people dwelling in the land of Canaan had been terrified by the presence of Israel in their land. Even by joining forces together with their neighbours, they were no match for the power of God. His purpose was to cleanse the land and give it to the people of Israel. Having conquered the cities in the southern land of Canaan, Joshua and the army of Israel turned their efforts to a northern campaign. Jabin summons all the kings of the north. Joshua 11 verses 1 to 5 The great fortress city Hazor the castle, lay 12 kilometres to the north of the Sea of Galilee. Its ruins are still there beside the highway to Israel's border with Lebanon. Hazor was the head, verse 10. With all the kingdoms in the north of the land and Jabin, the wise, the mightiest of the kings. But even Jabin, who thought his position was impregnable, was stunned at the swift advance of Joshua and the army of Israel through the centre and the south of the land. Summoning all the kings of the surrounding nations, from the mountains and the valleys, from the Jordan to the sea coast, verses 2 to 3, he formed a mighty confederacy. Not only were the not only were their numbers awesome, as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, but they possessed horses and chariots very many. Verse 4 They camped at the waters of Miram. Verse 5 This was a kind of warfare Israel had not encountered before. From a human point of view, there was no hope at all of Israel surviving such a contest. Not only were they vastly outnumbered by this massive array of warriors and weaponry, but ill-equipped to face the onslaught of the chariots. What deadly weapons these were, with iron blades attached to the wheels, cutting in pieces anything that came in their path, but they were nothing to Yahweh. Psalms 33 verse 16 to 22 Instructions from God Joshua 11 verse 6 And Yahweh said unto Joshua, Be not afraid. It is easy for us looking back at the events and knowing the outcome to see the faith of Joshua and Israel's fighting men. But these were truly terrifying circumstances. Would our faith be strong enough if we were facing an army of horses and chariots? Here now was a situation confronting them that was exactly as God had foretold. Deuteronomy 20 gives God's instructions for Israel in the case of war. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For Yahweh thy God is he that goeth with thee to fight for you against your enemies. Verses 1 and 4 God had every intention of giving his people the victory, but they must play their part, just as we must cooperate with God. It was not to be a long drawn out battle. Tomorrow about this time will I deliver them all slain before Israel. Chapter 11 verse 6 Joshua must arouse his army and move them north by night. Then comes the key strategy. Thou shalt hock their horses and burn their chariots with fire. Chapter 11 verse 6 This was the Israelites' part. They must maim or destroy the horses and set fire to the chariots, taking the enemy by surprise. 
Joshua 11 verses 7 to 9 What was Jabin's confidence placed in? Numbers and horses and chariots. What advantage did Israel have above this? Yahweh your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4 Once again the suddenness of the attack gave Israel distinct advantage over their enemies. Joshua and his men came suddenly and fell upon them. Verse 7 Before they had time to organize a defense, the Israelites attacked, God helping them with every stroke. What good were their horses and chariots now? Their horses were crippled and their chariots on fire. In panic they fled in all directions, with the men of Israel giving chase. They smote them until they left them, none remaining. Verse 8 Completing the task, Joshua 11 verse 10 to 23 When victory was certain, Joshua turned back to the city of Hazor, where Jabin himself had fled. To carry out God's commands through Moses, Joshua must not only slay the king but all the inhabitants of the city as well. There was a good reason for this, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods. So shall you sin against Yahweh your God. Deuteronomy 20 verses 16 to 18 Principle for Living Separateness from the Canaanite God gave clear instructions through Moses that all the inhabitants of the cities in the land should be destroyed. Deuteronomy 20 verses 16 to 18 And Joshua faithfully carried out all this in his northern campaign. Joshua 11 verses 11 to 14 The reason God gave this commandment is the principle of holiness. This involves separateness from the world and separateness to God. Yahweh teaches this principle often in the scriptures. Before they entered the land, while they were still at Sinai, God as their Saviour laid down this reason for saving them. Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Exodus 19 verse 6 All the law of Moses reinforced this principle of holiness. The Apostle Peter tells us the same thing. As he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation or behaviour as it is written. Be ye holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1 verse 15 to 16 God knows that we are easily led astray by curiosity. God knows that we are easily led astray by curiosity. We begin to question the way of life we have been taught from childhood. Our Father knows the things the world offers will appear attractive to us if we are not all the time looking to the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Yahweh's command for Israel was, Thou shalt consume all the people, thine eyes shall have no pity, neither shall thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. Deuteronomy 7 verse 16 in Israel's case, they were mingled among the nations and learned their works. Psalms 106, verse 35 to 36, and worship their gods. We may mix with people at school and in other environments who worship other gods, like sports stars, rock stars, film stars, and places of entertainment. Let us never get mixed up with them, but learn to be separate to our God, for we are a separate people. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 Following the destruction of Hazor, Joshua pressed on with a major campaign against all the cities of the kings who had been confederate with Jabin. Though Israel's battles were not over, 
Joshua wanted to ensure that no organised opposition of nations arose up again. Hazor alone was burnt, verse 13. Israel was allowed to take spoil from the other cities, verse 14. For seven years these wars continued, as they gradually overcame the Canaanites. Joshua's main aim was to give each of the tribes of Israel the opportunity to take their inheritance. They would then have the responsibility of overcoming the remaining inhabitants of the land and securing their possession. After the death of Joshua, they became slack and chose to let their enemies live peaceably among them, rather than do as God had said. Meanwhile, as long as Joshua lived and showed determination to follow God's commandments, the land rested from war. Verse 23 Bible Doctrine God will judge the nations Because God is the same today as he has always been, I am Yahweh, I change not, Malachi 3 verse 6, it is not surprising that the way he will judge the nations in the future will be just as he did in the past. As Hazor was the head of all those nations of the north, Joshua 11 verse 10, the word head is the Hebrew word Rosh. This word Rosh is also the ancient name of Russia. Rosh or Russia will come from the north parts against the land of Israel when Christ has returned. Ezekiel 39 verse 2 These are described in their ancient names in Ezekiel 38 verses 4 to 6. They will come like a storm, like a cloud to cover the land, thou and many people with thee. Verse 9 at the return of Christ, this confederacy of nations from the north will be destroyed upon the mountains of Israel. Ezekiel 39 verse 4 It will be a terrifying time for the tiny nation of Israel. In fact, two-thirds of them will die. The people of Israel today have no faith in Yahweh their God, but he still remembers them and will save them. When he saves them, they will turn back to him. They shall know that I am Yahweh their God. Ezekiel 39 verse 22 When the nations who come with the king of the north are destroyed upon the mountains of Israel, Ezekiel 39 verse 4, the people of Israel will burn all their weapons with fire. It will take seven years, verse 9 to 10. This great battle, called in the Bible Armageddon, Revelation 16, verse 16, is also called the Day of Yahweh, Joel 3, verse 14. The Lord Jesus Christ, greater than Joshua, will go out with the immortal saints and fight for Israel. This will eventually lead to the time when Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. Zechariah 14, verse 9. Summary Jabin, king of Hazor, gathered the kings of the north who placed their confidence in their vast numbers and in their iron chariots. God spoke to Joshua, reassuring him and giving instructions to hoe the horses and burn the chariots. Joshua was promised a swift victory and Israel fell suddenly upon the unsuspecting enemy and chased them as they fled. Joshua returned and killed Jabin and all his people and burnt Hazor to the ground. Israel overthrew the cities of the other kings and took the spoil for themselves. These lessons are the words taken from the Christadelphian Sunday School Association notes www.csa. ASN.AU used with permission.
Email your questions to readthebible2 at gmail.com and we look forward to you listening to the next lesson which will be called Joshua's Last Words.